Money is like a judge. It basically is like a mirror that reflects the value of other commodities. Assalamu alaikum, dear friends, and welcome back. Have you ever thought how Islamic scholars from the past thought about money? What's its purpose and the function is in the society? Today we are talking about great Imam Ghazali and how he imagined our money and how that could help us in today's economy and the problems that we are having. So let's start. Bismillah. After 2008 global economic crisis, Mufti Taki Usmani wrote a brilliant essay about some of the points that we should be pondering when it comes to reshaping our economic and financial landscape. In that essay, he quote, incredible quote from Imam Ghazali about what the role of money in society is. At the beginning of this essay, he talked about a quote that we see on every dollar note, which is in God we trust. But ironically, when it comes to the commercial transaction, how we spend that dollar, how we invest it, that God that we say that we trust in is nowhere in this equation. We totally disregard God and any rulings that has anything to do with religion or any kinds of ethics. Our entire focus when it comes to the money, finance and economy is placed on the human ideas. But human ideas are flawed, especially when they are driven by greed and profit motive that seems to preoccupy our mind and makes us not think about anything else except numeric growth that we see. And so what is really missing is deeper understanding, more ideological or philosophical understanding of money beyond our normal textbook definitions. And the Mufti Taki, before we go to Imam Ghazali himself, start this discussion by a very interesting and intriguing quote by Imam Hassan al-Basri, who said that money is such a friend of yours which benefits you only when it leaves you. In this quote, we see something very unusual. What kind of friend is money that it needs to leave you to benefit you? Well, that tells us something about utility of the money that money is not created for itself, it's created for some other function and for some other purpose. Imam Ghazali sets the scene by explaining that money is really a blessing from Allah. And why is that? The basic idea is that we need money to buy, to buy everything. And in the life that we live as humans, we are always in need of something. We are always in need of exchanging things. This is inevitable. If you have an apple, you can not always buy everything with apple, for example. But with money, you have access to everything. It's a source of ease, which is why Ghazali says that Allah Almighty has therefore created dinars and dirhams as judges and mediators between all commodities so that all objects of wealth are measured through them. In this, we see the core idea, a very unique idea that money is like a judge. It basically is like a mirror that reflects the value of other commodities. And when you think about judge, you think about something that is objective, independent. And therefore, the one who started trading in money, buying and selling the money, just like you buy and sell commodity, is going against this blessing that Allah has created for us, going against the function for which we have money. And unfortunately, this sale of money for money, where money is treated as a commodity, as an object of trade, creates a situation where money starts giving birth to more money. And we see that in today's economy where this fictional economy, this explosive growth of debt, created financial economy that is many times larger than the real economy. And this is exactly what Imam Ghazali has predicted almost when he talked about the function of money and that it shouldn't be taken as an object of trade. So he says that riba interest is prohibited because it prevents people from undertaking real economic activities. This is because when a person having money is allowed to earn more money on a basis of interest, either in spot or deferred transactions, it becomes easy for him to earn more money on a basis of interest without bothering himself to take pains in real economic activities. This leads to hampering the real interests of humanity because the interests of humanity cannot be safeguarded without real trade, skills, industry and construction. What do we learn from this lesson from Imam Ghazali is that returning to the original idea of the money 
which is supposed to be a medium rather than an object of trade, would return us to the objective and fairness when we are constructing economic system. Thank you for spending time to watch this video. If you would like to learn more about finance and economy from Islamic perspective, head to our new platform, Muslim Money Matters, where we go in much greater details regarding the content. Until next time, my name is Almi Cholan. Assalamu alaikum. Thank <laughs> you.